Okay, so this is chapter six, um, part two. Uh, at the end of uh, part one, they went to the dentist and then they went to buy some new shoes and they found out Mr. Berman uh, was their favorite shoe salesman. So let's see what happens in today's uh, reading of uh, chapter six, part two. I slipped out of my old shoes and stood up. I stuck my left foot into Mr. Berman's foot measure. Then he turned it around and put my right foot in. That's another reason why my mother thinks Mr. Berman is, a good, at, is good at selling shoes. He measures both feet. Some other salesmen only measure one. My mother says feet can be different sizes, even on the same person. And it's important to make sure the size fits the biggest foot. What color loafers, Peter? Mr. Berman asked. Brown, I said, same as my old ones. When Mr. Berman went to the back to look for shoes for me, my mother noticed a hole in the toe of my sock. Oh, Peter, why didn't you tell me you had a hole in your sock? I didn't know I had one, I said. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. It's my sock, Mom. Why would you be embarrassed, I asked. Well, it looks terrible. I, I mean, to come shopping for shoes with a hole in your sock? That's just awful. Can't you hide it a little? Where should I hide it? Try to, hi try to get the hole in between your toes so, so it doesn't show, my mother said. I wiggled my sock around, trying to rearrange my hole. My mother sure worries about silly things. Mr. Berman came out with two pairs of loafers. He likes to try different sizes to make sure I'm getting the right one. One pair was much too big. The other pair fit fine. Where or wrap? Mr. Berman asked my mother. Wrap, please, she said. We'll wear the old ones home. I have never been allowed to wear new shoes uh, home from the store. Don't ask me why. But my mother always has the new pair wrapped up, and I can't wear them until the next day. When I was finished, Mr. Berman untied Fudgy's shoes and measured his feet. Brown and white saddle shoes, my mother reminded him. Mr. Berman went to the back and returned with two shoe boxes. But when he opened the first box and Fudge saw the saddle shoes, he said, no. No what? My mother asked him. No shoes, Fudge said. He started kicking his feet. Uh, don't be silly, Fudgy. You need new shoes, my mother told him. No, 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 he hollered. Everybody in the shoe department looked over at us. Here's the perfect size, Mr. Berman told Fudge, holding up one shoe. Wait till you see how nice these new shoes will feel. Fudge kicked some more. It was impossible for Mr. Berman to get the shoes on his feet. He screamed, no shoes, no, no, no. My mother grabbed hold of him, but he was wiggling all around. He managed to give Mr. Berman a kick in the face. Lucky for him, Fudge only had on socks. Now look, Fudge, my mother said, you must get new shoes. Your old ones are too small. So what kind do you want? I, I don't know why my mother bothered to, ask, to talk to him like he was a regular person, because when Fudge gets himself into a temper tantrum, he doesn't listen to anything. By that time, he had thrown himself onto the floor where he beat his fists against the rug. What kind do you want, Fudge? Because we're not leaving here until you have new shoes, my mother said, like she meant it. I figured we'd be there for the rest of the day or maybe the week. How could my mother have been embarrassed over a little hole in my sock and then act like nothing much was happening when her other son was on the floor yelling and screaming and carrying on. I'm going to count to three, my mother told Fudge. And then I want you to tell me which shoes you want. Ready? One, two, three. Fudge sat up. Like Pita's, he said. I smiled. I, I guess the kid really looks up to me. He even wants to wear the same kind of shoes. But everybody knows you can't buy loafers for such a little guy. They don't come in your size, Mr. Berman told Fudge. Yes, yes, 
Yes, like Peter's. I tolerated. Mr. Berman held up his hands and looked at my mother as if to say, I give up. But my mother said, I have an idea. She motioned for me and Mr. Berman to come closer. I had the feeling I wasn't going to like her idea, but I listened anyway. I think we'll have to play a little joke on Fudge, she said. What do you mean? I asked. Well, suppose Mr. Berman, Ber Berman brings out a pair of saddle shoes in your size. And oh no, I said, you're not going to get me to wear saddle shoes, never. Let me finish, my mother said. Mr. Berman can bring them out and you can try them on and then Fudge will think that's what you're getting. But when we leave, we'll take the loafers. That's mean, I said. You're taking advantage of him. And since when do you worry about that? My mother asked, since now, I told her. Look, Peter, my mother said, checking her watch. It's 12 o'clock. I'm starved. Me too, I said. Well, then, if you ever want to get some lunch, let's try my idea. Okay, okay, I said. I sat back in my chair while Mr. Berman hurried to the stockroom again. Fudge looked up at me from his position on the floor. Like pitas, he said. Yeah, sure, Fudge, I told him. Mr. Berman came back with a pair of brown and white saddle shoes in my size. I tried them on. Did they look ugly? See, Peter's nice saddle shoes, my mother said. Now Fudgy, tries, tries on his nice saddle shoes. Fudge let Mr. Berman get him into his new pair of shoes. See, he said, see, my pitas. He held up a foot. That's right, Fudge, I said, just like mine. You sure can fool little kids easy. Wear or wrap? Mr. Berman asked my mother while Fudge walked around in his new shoes. Wrap, of course, she said. I wonder what my mother would tell Fudge tomorrow when I wore my new loafers. Oh, well, that really wasn't my worry. It was her idea. When Fudge was back in his old shoes and her package was ready, Mr. Berman gave my brother a striped balloon. He offered one to me, too. I refused. How could he think a person in fourth grade might want a shoe store balloon? That wasn't so terrible, was it, Peter? My mother said as we left the store. It wasn't? I asked. Well, it could have been worse, my mother said. I suppose, I answered. We went to Hamburger Heaven for lunch. We sat in a booth. Fudge tossed his balloon around while my mother ordered for him and then for herself. I ordered my own lunch, a hamburger with everything on it and a chocolate milkshake. Fudge was getting a kitty special, meaning hamburger without the roll, some mashed potatoes and a side order of green peas. When our lunch was served, my mother cut Fudge's hamburger into tiny pieces, which he shoved into his mouth with his fingers. Then she handed him a spoon and told him to eat his mashed potatoes. But instead of eating them, he smeared them on the wall. See, he said, uh, I thought you told me he wouldn't behave like that anymore. I said to my mother, Fudgy, that's naughty. You stop it right now, my mother said. But Fudge sang, eat it or wear it. And then he dumped a whole dish of peas over his head. I laughed. I couldn't help it. He looked so silly with the peas falling from his hair. And when I and when I eat and laugh at the same time, I choke. So I choked on my pickle and my mother had to whack me on the back, which gave Fudge another chance to spread mashed potatoes on the wall. That's when the waitress asked my mother, did we want anything else? No, thank you, my mother said. We have more than enough now. She wiped off the wall with her napkin and told Fudge he was very, very naughty. Not me, Fudge said. Not me. Yes, you. My mother told him, why can't you eat like Peter? See how nice Peter eats? Fudge didn't say anything. He just stuck his fork into his balloon. It popped and he screamed, ah, oh gone. I want more, want more balloon, more. Shut up, I told him. Can't you ever act human? That's enough, Peter. 
my mother said. She should have slugged him. That would teach that brother of mine how to behave in Hamburg heaven. We took the cab home. Fudge fell asleep on the way. He had his fingers in his mouth and made his slurping noise. My mother whispered to me, our day wasn't that bad, was it, Peter? I didn't answer. I just looked out the taxi window and decided that I would never spend a day with Farley Drexel Hatcher again. Okay. Um, here are the questions for chapter six, part two. The first one is, uh, why does Peter's mom feel embarrassed with him? And how is it fixed? What triggered Fudge's temper tantrum in this chapter? Number two, okay. Number three, um, how did Mrs. Hatcher solve the problem? And if you were Peter, would you do the same thing he did? Number four, what happened at Hamburger Heaven? Okay, be specific as to what happened in Hamburger Heaven. And lastly, was there something in this part that reminded you of the Mr. Hatcher? Of Mr. Hatcher, okay? So make sure you answer these questions and have them ready for tomorrow, okay? Bye.